of what it is, and uh, if you want to have it, to use it, or extend applications that use it, I hope you can have some uh, insights about uh, how much work is needed after this presentation. So that's my goal. Uh, so first of all, what is Grillo? Yeah, so two things that you, you must keep in mind about thinking, thinking about Grillo. It's a multimedia framework. Its purpose is to gather uh, content and metadata. So you can uh, look for videos, images, any kind of metadata or content for multimedia applications. And the second thing is that it is pluggable. So how it's, this work is done through plugins. One of the great advantages is that it's very easy to extend and make new plugins, new sources, so on. Uh, yeah, this first part of the presentation, I want to kind of showcase a little bit about uh, how Grillo is being used, uh, mostly in the desktop uh, in GNOME. So it, it gets easier to understand uh, uh, its purpose and how it's being used and so on. Yeah, so this is uh, GNOME videos, so Toten. It has two interfaces, I don't know if you can see well enough. I can open it afterwards anyway. Um, so yeah, so you can see here, uh, there is this basic interface, it's in the channels in GNOME videos. Uh, so there is this upper side, you can try to search through any kind of plugin, or you can browse them. So you can browse through any kind of uh, plugins that you have available. In my case, I, I, I don't think I have many, but for instance, uh, browsing Apple trailers, uh, you can see, like I, I scrolled a little bit already, and you can see like the, some videos and play them, and you can get the thumbnails, name, uh, the length of the video. So all of this is done by, uh, with, with Grillo, with some API calls, you can have it all. Like just browsing Apple trailers, you can get this on Totten. Uh, Totten, of, of course, there is a widget for it, and it uh, fills it. And for instance, search, yeah. So for instance, I was searching uh, Mr. Robot, which is a cool series, you should check it out. Uh, yeah, then it shows like uh, the, whole, the whole feed that I could get from uh, YouTube itself in a browser. Here, for, ex for instance, is Rhythm Inbox. Uh, the interface is obviously different. I am browsing uh, Jamendo, it's a, a another web source for music. Uh, here I'm browsing, so Jamendo in, in feeds, in top albums, I'm playing some music, one of the best albums on the albums that they have there. Uh, you can search as well, there is an interface there for search, so basically I, I just show it two operations that you can do for with Grillo, like searching and browsing, but the point is in different kinds of applications, right, in different kinds of plugin sources. But one of the things that I find more amusing, more cool in Grillo is that you can just gather metadata. metadata. So you have like the stiff movie and you want the thumbnail, you want the subtitles, you want like who works on it, cast and so on. So if you know some sort of source, like I don't know, EMDB, and you want to get all this information from there and, and put in your application, so Grillo can do it very nicely. Yeah, so I want to, uh, to, before going to the next part, I want to just a little bit explain how, how this part works. So, Totten is the application here, then there is the blue part, I, I would say like this is whole Grillo, and then the green part is the plugins. So, this interface uh, that I just show you, use four plugins. The video title, video title parsing, that in this case is the only one written in Lua, I will open the source code afterwards <laughs> to show how it's done. Uh, the TVDB for TV shows, so it gets like the cast, uh, the director, so on. TMDB, which is used for movies, and open subtitles plugins, so you can get the subtitles for that movie or that TV show that you want to see. How it works? So Totten asks Grillo, uh, Grillo, I have the file name of this uh, movie. 
Can you get me some information for it? And then video, it will pass through video tutorial parsing, which is the plugin that says I can handle it from a file name. I can give you this information. And video tutorial parsing does it. If it does successfully, it will get to Grillo back. And with the, in case of a movie, it's uh, the year, it's the name of the movie. If it's a TV show, it can maybe show the season, episode, the name of the TV show, and so on. And then, yeah, Totten, it, 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 that's not just what Totten wants, right? He wants like the thumbnails, he wants the, the cast, and so on. So if it's like a TV show, Grillo, Totten asks, Grillo, give me everything that I want, <laughs> right? So it will do through the two plugins at least, uh, in case of TV show, TVDB or open subtitles, and Grillo will return him everything that it's necessary to pop up this interface and play the video for you with all that you need. So this is more likely the workflow of it. And yeah, we are entering the second part. I want to like pass through a little bit. Like I, I want to show you how Grillo uh, works a little bit, but I will not go in deep details on it. If you have any questions, feel free. We can dive in it if you want. But my main point is like the goal I said is like give you an overview and how it works and what you can do and how much work you need if you want to use it and extend it and so on. So if you are using Grillo, the common application flow, it's just this for you just have like you have already the plugins uh, in some outside the application. So all you need is load them, load them. Then there are applications that need to some sort of configuration like username, password, uh, API key, or so on. So these kind of things, the application uh, can configure and give it nicely. I, I think you saw it in Totten. I had my uh, pocket uh, with my username and so on, so uh, it was configured already. And then you have to activate. Then it's ready to be used. So far, any questions? No. Nope. Yeah, so this is a sample. Yeah, cool thing. Grillo, Grillo API is in C, but you, there is some introspection. Uh, you know, music use it in Python. I think there are Vala bindings for it as well. So yeah, there are several ways you can use it, even in application level. Uh, yeah, so this is like a, a, just a small example of how you can uh, configure the plugin, so you can see in the, the first function, uh, the, in case of YouTube, you just need the API key that YouTube need, uh, provides you, uh, then it's like generic, right? It's not user, uh, user specifics, but generic. So any application that needs to interact with YouTube needs this API key. So you can set it, and that's all. Like I, I'm not going deep in, in, in the whole, uh, all the objects that it can provide, but if you have any question, like the Grillo registry is the one that handles the plugins. Uh, so everything related to the plugins go through it. The Grillo config is like the, the object for configurations and so on. No, no much mystery. Like we have a really good documentation. Uh, it takes like uh, just a few, one hour maybe, and you have, you, you, you could understand everything. And then the second function is the load plugins, uh, like the most interesting part is the last function, Grillo registry load all plugins. It will do it like uh, with, uh, you call the configure before and then load it and that's, that's basically it. Yeah, so operations that Grillo supports. I, I've, I told you search and browse, I maybe not was, I was not clear with resolve actually. So all that gathering metadata the operation that you do is resolve. So you already have a video, you already have some information, you want more information. So this operation to get more information from something that you already have is resolve. Uh, so yeah, for instance, you have the file name, it's, uh, it's already something, and you want the thumbnail for that video or so. Yeah, you use resolve. Grillo also supports two more functions, which is remove and store. Yeah, the idea is that like you are uh, interacting with the, some source and you may, may want to remove some content from your remote source or even local, uh, depends on the plugin, or store. So both of them are, I, I didn't show, but uh, 
they, they are quite similar. An example of the search. So yeah, in C again, so in this case I have the, this part here, this, this lower side, Grillo source search is the function. You can see like how it's defined up, up, up there. You need the Grillo source. In this case, it's Jamendo. You can get it with registry or uh, there are plenty of ways to, do, to have this. Uh, then you search for rock, for instance, because you want rock music or so on, or rock artist, uh, who knows. And then you have to create a list of the keys that you want. Uh, maybe not all of the keys that are provided by Jamendo, maybe some keys are provided by other source. And this is one of the coolest things in Grillo. If, if you want something like lyrics, very common, you want lyrics from music uh, and Jamendo does not provide it, it can look for other sources, other plugins. Hey, can you give me the lyrics for this music? And it will return in the same callback for you if, it's, if, if it's, it finds it, okay? So yeah source, uh, the text you want to search, the keys that you want, some options. So there are some examples there like, yeah, I want five, uh, uh, five results. I want, uh, like, uh, I want to, to resolve it in different ways, like uh, as fast as possible it's possible, just local, uh, remote. So there are several options that you can set for, for, for it. And then you pass the search callback, some, some user data, and that's it. When the, the Grillo will pass, we'll try to solve everything for you and call this callback back. With every every media, like in this example, uh, I'm trying to search for five elements. It will call this callback five times. Yeah, basically each time is a new Grillo media. It can uh, set the remaining uh, parameter. So like uh, you ask it for five or fifty, but it only have two. Don't know. So it will say, oh, you wanted five, but uh, it don't ha only have two, so you can check remaining the user data. And yeah, this is a way that you can get the information from Grillo. There is a, a whole API for each metadata, so you can get like uh, duration. Grillo Media get duration from the media, uh, get the UR URL for some video or so. Yeah. I. This is the part of the search. I will not go into browse, remove, and store. They are really, really, really similar. Like you have to pass like Grillo source, browse, and some content to it, then you, it will browse. Like in the Jamendo example, you can pass browse new and you to return true elements, which is like the, like I forgot, but yeah, the, the top level of browsing. Then you can go like by artist, the second level, and so on. Uh, remove, store is the same thing. You pass the Grillo Media in that source, what you want to store or remove. It's yeah, so let's show some, some example of uh, what I want to show is exactly that, that interface from Totem that actually does not exist. It's a work in progress. Uh, it should be, I should have finished it by now, but uh, yeah, but yeah, I didn't. So I'll show it a little bit now. First of all, how it's currently, how is it currently, right? Don't know which way is better, no, no, no. So it's just like a basic interface. I just filled this, it looking to internet to get, actually it did not. So the, in case of TV shows, there is a, a database, a cache locally for, for, this, for the plugin, so it didn't even look into the, into the internet to get this information because I did it before. But the internet here is really good, so it, it would do very fast. Like three examples, Breaking Bad, Limitless, and let's see the source. So yeah, you can see there is like the widget, uh, which is Totten Video Summary, and there is sample.c, right? I will first of all show the sample.c. The sample.c would be like, mm, yeah, bigger, bigger, bigger. Mm, enough or? So let's see if I can, there is just two functions, right? The main and setup Grillo. Let's go fast by main first. 
Uh, yeah, GTK in it, Grillo in it, right? Some information related to widgets. In the case of Totten, they prefer the dark team. So uh, Bastian fix it for me. And then you set up Grillo. Let's go to it. So this widget, it, it uses, yeah, three. Just three. I, I, I thought uh, I said it before four because open subtitles is not upstream that yet. So the branch, there is a branch with the subtitles in this widget, but it's not here in this moment. So there is just three plugins being loaded. Uh, actually, it loads all of them, but it not, does not activate them. It's a new API, actually. So uh, first of all, Grillo config new because the, all of them, uh, no, sorry. The TVDB and TV, TMDB, like the, for TV shows and movies, they need an API key. So all I need to do is like create a new config key, uh, set the API key that I want, and add the config to the registry. So when I activate, it will pass through the plugin that config, and then it will load it uh, correctly, right? And I, I uh, activate the plugin afterwards. The second one, TMDB, because if it's a movie, uh, same thing. Uh, it's an API key. I add it. I load the plugin and so on. And then this one, Lua Factory. So the thing with Lua integration is that uh, all the sources are part of a plugin. Uh, let me explain that better. So there is, uh, you have to understand two things, uh, a plugin, what is the implementation of a plugin, and what is a source. I mentioned this a few times, but now is the time to explain it. So a plugin, for instance, he can provide you several sources. Like, you, uh, I don't know, Flickr. You may have like three different accounts on Flickr, and you can, Flickr can give you back three sources, right? One for each account. Uh, that's not true with Lua. Uh, that, that, that could not be done because in the case, Lua Factory is a plugin and each plugin is, is on source. So if I have Flickr uh, in Lua, it would be just one source. So in this, so this is like, a, 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 I'm, I'm going a little bit uh, maybe deep enough. Yeah, so that's why I, I just load in Lua Factory and it, what will happen, it will load all the sources that I have in that case, which in the, which the one I will be using is the video title parsing. So I don't know if I was clear. Do anyone have any questions? Yeah? Okay. So the widget. Yeah, so you can see that the widget, like, uh, yeah, it's like 800 lines, I guess. It has like three resolve operations. You can see it. So I do, ah, sorry, it's here. So I do, there is a function to do the resolve by the TVDB, a function to resolve by TMDB, and a function to resolve by video tito parsing. But maybe it's interesting as well to get the source. So you can see here I'm already using it, right? It's, which is, which is the source? Yeah, you can see I'm using self proof video to parse source. Where is it? Where I set it? Here. In the when I set the new, so in the sample here, uh, which one that creates the, the the plugin, the the widget. So when you create it in the in the init function there, it will it, in the new function it will uh, try to get all the sources that uh, it the widget needs. In this case, Grillo TMDB, DTVDB, and Grillo Video Tito Parsing, right? And I save the sources to use later on. And yeah, and also some uh, metadata keys that are specific. So in this case, like the TVDB, there is a specific key, which is the TVDB poster key, and TMDB has the TMDB poster key, and I needed to get it from registry. So I do it everything here, and afterwards it's just the resolve call. I'll show you now. So first of all, when you try to add the function, it will try to resolve video tito parsing, right? 
The function is it's pretty, the three of them are really similar. Uh, you want to, so, to resolve the video title parsing and you create some options, resolve it, and you, you ask what you want. So I don't know if the video is a TV show or not, so I ask everything that I can from that. And the callback will try to understand if it's a movie or not. So if, it's a, if it, I can get the show name, which is specific for TV show, then I know it's a TV show. I set a boolean here for later use. I set the content already to not make the UI stuck, like uh, waiting for several operations. So it sets the name, set the, everything that I have, and then I resolve by, by TVDB, which is the same thing. Like I, I just ask again lots of information and ask TVDB for those information. Like, so it's basically the same thing. And when I finish it, I set the UI with it, and so on. Yeah, so far any questions? Any, any doubts? Yeah. Uh, at if I can ask all, all of it, no, it's not what I do, uh, because uh, the for, so for resolving, it, it's there is a option, which is this resolve normal, resolve normal, this op uh, this option is just like I want from this source only. There is resolve full, and resolve full does exactly like that. If that source does not have what I want, it will try to get from other sources. So it's an it's a op a option flag, right? You can set. Before? Yeah, before the, before the calling. Yeah, before calling the function. I answered. Yeah? Any other questions so far? Yeah, we will have a scarf of two. Um, so going back to, so yeah, so I showed you search browse is basically the same. You can see like uh, all of them is like uh, some basic call API calls, but the great great thing is that you don't have to care about what is going to happen in the plugin side, right? Uh, what uh, does it use JSON? Does it need like some crazy stuff? No, I don't care. I'm just doing some search. If it's some configuration needed. Uh, it's on the config level, like in application, uh, starting it. So it's very, I like it, <laughs> very easy. So I want to give you some overview about creating plugins, but I'm not going to go into Vala and neither in <coughs> C part, okay? Because yeah, it would be like a bit boring go through all of them, uh, in my opinion. But I will give like at least uh, some some comparison. Comparison. So yeah, you can create three types of uh, plugins in three languages for at the moment. And C was the mainly one. The the the, the which is we started with C. Uh, it's a G object. So there is lots of boilerplate if you want to just start uh, writing the plugin. Uh, but yeah, it's all the benefits that you can have in Grillo. The C can handle it because it it's the main one. Uh, for instance, creating multiple sources. I, I have a, a, the example of UPnP, which is Universal Plug, plug and Play. So I was looking, for instance, uh, in, uh, during uh, other talk, uh, in my top 10, I was seeing like some people that, that had DONA uh, server, so I could like access some content from it. Uh, I don't want to access it, but uh, so. Like you can have uh, any uh, different sources for, it searches the network, right? And provides this to your application in case totten. It's very nice, it works out of the box, I don't need to do anything. So C plugins. The Lua sources, as I mentioned, uh, the, which is loaded by Lua Factory and Vala. Actually, I never touched Vala. Some other people here did it, I know. So why Lua? Uh, it was like one question that, uh, yeah, uh, the Lua integration came like 
two, three years ago, yeah, when I started, because it was my first Google Summer of Code project on this, uh, having Lua integration. And people ask it, why, but why not Python? Why not a, like a powerful language? Because we don't want like a, a so heavy stuff on it. We want just some, something light that can do some, uh, you can extend it uh, if you want. And I will show you that we did uh, with some uh, nice extensions. It makes writing a plugin much faster nowadays. So why not Python, not, why not other languages? Because Lua is just like enough. It's fast. Uh, it's very uh, uh, easy to integrate with C. And yeah, and you can see like Lua has lots of uh, comparisons. It's a quite fast language. Yeah. Definitely, the, 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 the goal was having like less boilerplate than GeoObject plugins in C and making the writing plugins more fun and faster. Uh, we have some, great, some, some helpers from Lua Libre that uh, is part of the Lua Factory plugin. So, yeah, we don't need to parse JSON, we don't need to parse XML on Lua like we need in C. It's, there's no way. In Lua, we just like get this from a string and it creates a table for you. I don't know if you know Lua, but table is like a, one of the best things in Lua. There is the Goa integration as well, which is, stands for Gnome Line Account. So you have like Gnome Line Account in Gnome. You can like type your username, configure like Pocket in my case, uh, YouTube or so on, uh, so, uh, Flickr definitely. And if it's integrated, the plugin is integrated, is using Goa, Gnome Line Account. It will pass this information to the source, the source, and out of the box will work. Uh, yeah, but it has its limitations. So, in the sense that, for instance, we, yeah, like, we don't support at the moment the store and remove uh, uh, operations in Grillo, just because we are still, like, uh, trying to improve it as much as we can. Uh, having it is not hard, but it's not uh, some, there, is, there wasn't any request to have it uh, so far. Like, uh, you saw, I mentioned the TVDB poster key. So that's a metadata key that the plugin created. Lua, at the moment, is not uh, able to create any specific metadata keys that the application might want, uh, which is pity, but uh, it's some work in progress to, be, to have it. And yeah, definitely a few more things that is not on top of my mind, but uh, otherwise it's quite cool. Yeah, actually uh, there is also Jure source integration, so you can have it uh, quite well. I, I'll show some code. But before showing the code, just to showcase like how a, a plugin is uh, initialized on, on Grillo. So in this case, it's the video title parsing again. I just need to create a table. In this, with the name source is important, uh, and set some some information from it for it. ID, the name and description, they are all mandatory. Then you can say like this supported keys. In this case, like the name of the episode, uh, the show, public date, all this, it can handle. It can return some information for it if it, it it's possible. If he can do it, the supported media is video. So yeah, something I did not mention before, Grillo Media has a, some time ago, for since 2009, since it started, three types of media. Actually, four. Uh, video, image, audio, and container. And you, it's, it's interesting for the, for the plugin to filter it, right? I don't, I don't want to, like, I don't know, I, I'm, I, I want to give you lyrics information. I don't want to do it for images, right? So. This is uh, very handy in several cases. So you can set like supported media for the, uh, this, this plugins to do. And yeah, resolve keys is the, for the resolve operations. It actually says like what is required. So all it needs is a title, like uh, the file name in this case. Let's show some sources, some examples as well. So far, any questions? No? Yep. So yeah, I opened here two examples, the Guardian videos and the Apple trailers. But why not? Let me open Totten first. So this is the like my daughter. Then channels you can see here. 
So uh, the Tottenham open it. Apple Movies trailers is the one that I will show. This is all done by these 100 lines in Lua. Like getting this content, right? The filling the widgets is part of the Tottenham. <coughs> oh, don't know. Yeah, Bastien was the one that wrote, wrote this one. Yeah, we can set some information there. In this case, you saw that uh, in Totten there is an icon related to GNOME to to uh, Guardian videos. Uh, is by this uh, from the resource, so it has integration with G-Resource, which, which is nice. Yeah. Um, so you saw that uh, I was able to browse, actually I was able to browse Apple videos, but it's the same. So what, how it works with uh, API, Lua API for implementing a function. So in this case, browse, right? If it was search, the first parameter would be a text, like what I want you to, 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 to find. As it is a browse, it's, it's this media. This media could be new, as I said, then it should like provide the, the root case for the browsing. But if I like artist, uh, then it will be like the artist uh, container. So uh, it's like a parameter for the plugin to do the browse correctly in the right level. Options are related to the Grillo options. So you can have like how many, in this case, these two cases, how many, uh, how many data I want to return, uh, how many data I want to skip. Like I want to skip the first 100 informations and uh, videos or so, and give me 50 more. And yeah, this is like the, co uh, the logic behind it, how to, to do the handling to get the right URL. And here is the one of the Grillo functions, Grillo fetch, which does, you can pass an array or just a single URL, and you can download the content of that. So usually what happens is you are trying to get some JSON, some XML, maybe HTML, and you want to parse it, uh, and this will provide you the content of it. Like uh, so you, you pass the URL you want, and the call, Lua callback function on some user data to it. Callback function. Then the results are here. Could be more than one, right? And this is like one of the nicer functions, one of them. It, like, you don't have to care about the content of the JSON. You, you have a table now. So you can like make the whole Grillo media directly from it. it. It's actually exactly what the Lua does, Lua Factor. Uh, you need to pass back a Grillo uh, table, and you pro, uh, create a Grillo media for you. So if I can have the JSON in a uh, uh, in a table already, uh, half half of the work is done, uh, just a single line. So just for example, this is the JSON. It needs like a response, a status, and so on. In this case, I did just one video, and you saw the results here array in JSON provides like a type of a video, uh, some other fields like uh, let's see, publication, some summary, and so on. But in in in, in the Lua side, I just need to like okay, JSON fail? No, JSON is stat, so I'm already accessing the JSON. Is it fail? No. So if it fails. You can like return it as I have her, or you can like start to uh, walk through the table related to the results and returning each time doing a callback for the media, media that you create. Then it will call the application callback and so on. So quite quite fast. I have like five more minutes. I can show you another one with the XML, which is Apple trailers. But so far, any other questions? Luis Carl, yeah? Okay, uh, so since you are parsing uh, all these sorts of things, there comes a time uh, when uh, the code is probably getting big and the one you will play a lot of time uh, processing it. Are you, uh, have you implemented any mechanism that actually tries to keep track of what you do from the feedback? Because that's sometimes a problem. Yeah. 
So, uh, so in, in case of, for, example, for, for instance, trying to fetch too much data, like downloading it, and it can take time. Yeah, it's so, a typical problem with Moolah. Yeah. When you reach the plugin right, it runs uh, too long. So are you, do you have any, any mechanism? Yeah. So this, this Grillo fetch is actually a user uh, API for the Grillo net, which is a library for Grillo. And this is like a libsoup implementation. So what it does is like using libsoup smartly to exactly handle this kind of information. So Grillo has this library for the C plugins, and we have it for the Lua plugins as well. And it does it uh, uh, quite well. Uh, It will not, ret maybe it will not return. Uh, if I don't think there is any timeout on the Grillo net, but it, yeah, it could, it could have uh, some, but uh, yeah, I don't know if, uh, I never saw it, but <laughs> it could be a bug, yeah. But so far it's not in the Lua side. It would be in the library related to fetching the data, right? Because this is all um, uh, GLE main loop, and yeah, and it just check if the data was already finished or not, and then, Keep doing other stuff. Under scarf. Any other questions? Oh. So in case of Apple Trailer, it's pretty similar. Browsing. Uh, and fetching here as well. It's basically that. You like you have the input from the application, you fetch some data, you parse this data. Uh, and you provide the, in the callback the, what it was requested. So it's like very similar, but the main gains here compared with C is like these two functions, the XML string to table, and in the other case, Guardian Videos, JSON string to table as well, right? Because it makes like from a string, whole string, that in C you have to parse each element, and like you can see like in the other sources like TVDBB, which I implemented, it's very annoying, like a uh, hundred lines of just that. And here's a hundred lines, everything. So very fast, easy to write plugins nowadays with Lua. So uh, what I want to tell you in the end is that Grillo is very cool, <laughs> for my opinion. It's uh, less, very, less code in your application, right? Because everything, most of it is handled in, uh, in the application in the Grillo side. Uh, one API to handle all the different technologies and protocols that have it there. So you just need like one interface to, for, for all of them. And yeah, you can create three, three types of plugins at least. Yeah, if you want like Vala, which I know some people like, uh, C or Lua, and so on. That's all for me. If you have any questions, let me know. You can uh, find us in Grillo and gipnet.org. Uh, I'm always there. Uh, we have a good documentation, which I did not show. I can show it now, maybe? Yeah, so it's like really good documentation. We have like how, how to write applications uh, with Grillo, how to do plugins with Grillo, how to implement sources. Like it's very good documentation. So all the operations are here. Uh, examples, like all the descriptions. So if you, my main goal is making you understand how hard is it or how easy is it to have it. And I hope you understood and like it. That's all for me. Thank you. Uh, yeah? Can I throw? Yeah. Nobody? I think it was just two scarves, right? I think so. Them for questions. Okay, I don't know if I have a, a, a that much. <sighs> Can I re uh, remove it?